we don't care what each other thinks about us, you know. Uh, like if we like some bubblegum pop song, we like it, you know. <laughs> so it's fun to pass that stuff around to each other. Hi, I'm Michael Ellirun. I'm five foot ten, and we're here in the studio at Super Chief with Future Crib. How are you guys doing? We're doing great. Would you like to just quickly, uh, Jake, quickly say your names, just so that the audience may be familiar? Um, my name is Zach. I play guitar. Yes, and what you do? Yeah. My name is Johnny, and I sing. My name is Julia. And I play the bass. <laughs> My name is George, and I play the drums. My name is Bryce, and I play the guitar. They've been playing a couple shows in New York, and they are on tour for a good long while. How long are you guys on tour? 20 days. How's it been? It's been really good. We have a really good time in every city. You know, it's it's fun meeting new people every night and maybe seeing some friends you've met before. Sometimes we've been to a couple of these cities multiple times. It's our first time in New York uh, playing music. And it's been really enjoyable. That's awesome. How many days do you have left? We have a little less than a week left. It's, uh, I think we have six. We're touring with Nordista Freeze. And, uh, Shouts out. We're, kind of, we're backing him up on this tour, and he's uh, done most of the booking, and he's a true powerhouse of a person. Shouts out. Shouts out. I really get the sense that you guys don't argue that much, you know? Am I right on that, or am I wrong on that? I think you're right. I don't I don't ever find us arguing, and if we if things start to, like, get weird, we sense it immediately and diffuse it. We, we tend to just talk it out and be open with each other on what we're feeling about, you know, whether it's, like, personal lives or what we're feeling in the music and everything. We just... Open dialogue is kind of the key, and it's kind of frivolous to, to stew that up. And, and also just arguing outwardly is, is really not any of our personalities, you know, just like, I don't know. We're all just really honest with each other. Yes. Yeah. For the most part, we've known each other for a really long time. So it's just, it's easy to kind of diffuse the situation. Yeah. I was going to ask, what are some of your, like, habits or rituals or things you do to kind of keep yourself calm and sane? So that answered a few of them. I was wondering if anyone had anything particular to them that they wanted to share? I, I said reading books, bought a bunch of books. Um, just sort of started Into the Wild. It's about an adventure we took, and I thought, hey, I'm taking it kind of an adventure right now. <laughs> Might as well. Not as, not as uh, deadly. <laughs> We try and do like yoga sometimes. Like uh, on the last freeze tour we did, we try to do it every day and like really decompress that way. We haven't done it a whole lot on this tour. We haven't like, I guess as a group, been like we're doing yoga today. But yeah, that really that really did stop on it. I do. <laughs> I tend to work out like sometimes just do calisthenics and stuff to kind of kind of keep me fresh and everything. With <laughs> that, like stifled that. I brought like a jump rope and do stuff when I can when there's space but that's that's kind of a personal thing for me it's just like every morning or every night just kind of like taking some time and stretching out and doing some exercises and stuff it really keeps me fresh I like to do that but well you look great <laughs> oh. and that's where I do it flex <laughs> do you guys collaborate when you're working on future crypt stuff or is it mainly Johnny or, or how does it how does it work and my my favorite bands I listen to are bands you know who are we were hanging out and collaborating together, and um, there's an element of freedom that comes with doing things all on your own, but there's also an element of frustration, and you can go down the rabbit hole really quick and get too frustrated and just want to throw it out the window. But with a group of people all, you know, emotionally invested in the same thing, um, it's kind of hard to get bogged down on one thing, because everybody is pushing each other in different directions, you know. So, so the final product feels way better to me when, when multiple people have worked on it rather than just like me doing things for, or like doing a guitar take for eight hours and then wanting to just go to bed. <laughs> Do you think there are like artists that you all really are inspired by as a unit? We're all really big into Dylan, but yeah. I don't know if that comes through. I <laughs> just like the first thing that popped into my mind is Dylan all, who? So, <laughs> Dylan Crack. I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're, we're, every time like we're in the van, we're like, you know, sometime we're listening to a Bob Dylan record or we're talking about one. Or, like, we're all just like 
pretty into it, but I don't know how much that translates into what we do, but that's just what came into my head when you mentioned it, anything that we all share. But. We're also all, I would say, like, pretty big into, like, Wilco, and Johnny's on an Animal Collective kick right now, which maybe he would like to talk about some. Uh, it inspired me to get a sampler. <laughs> inspired Nashville to get a sampler. Yes, <laughs> true, true. I think, uh... Bryce talking about Bob Dylan. I think the thing that inspires me the most about Bob Dylan is his willingness to to do anything he wants to do with his songs. Because ultimately, if you created something, it's yours. It's yours to destroy. It's yours to uh, revise. You know. So we we really like to, especially when we play in town a lot in Nashville, and we have maybe two shows in a week or two shows in a month. Like one show, we'll play. Everyone's got a guitar, and there's like three guitars, and it's loud, and it's like punk. And then the next show will be, you know, we've got four people on stage, and we've got an acoustic guitar, and a melodica, and it's very, it's a folk set, and, you know, finding ways to change the way that the songs are delivered to make it interesting for people who see you multiple times. Because if someone comes to two shows and sees the same set twice, then they're probably less inclined to come to the next one, you know? And it's fun for us. Have you guys found yourself indulging in any guilty pleasures on this tour? Whether it's like whoever's like, you know, got the aux cord in the car or whatever. Got any guilty pleasure listens? I like to think that none of us have uh, any real guilty pleasures. That's what I was about to say. Like, uh, you know, things that we enjoy listening to, we're generally, we don't really care what the perception of a certain type of art that we consume may be because we enjoy it, you know, and we're all really good friends, so like, we don't care what each other thinks about us, you know. Uh, like, if we like some bubblegum pop song, we like it, you know. <laughs> so, it's fun to pass that stuff around to each other. Damn, you really just turned the tables on me there. <laughs> Got you this time, man. Yeah, we've been asked that, and sometimes we just talk about it, and we're like, yeah, I mean, I've been listening to this, this weird thing, but I like it. And I, I'm not I'm afraid to admit it, I guess. But. I think that... Being on the road and just being in a band or pursuing music in general is a very unstable life and it's very turbulent and I think it finds you going place to place to place to place without really uh, like finding a sense of settling down or stability. So my last question for you guys is uh, for each of you, so you all have to answer it you know, one by one. Uh, what do you envision your future crib looking like? <laughs> My future crib, hopefully, will be my granddad's farm. I think I'm gonna move there one day and uh, have a big garden. That's awesome. Uh, a hobbit hole, very cozy, warm, wooden hobbit hole. I, I love Nashville. I, it's a, a city I've just been in love with my whole life. But I think it'd be really interesting to live like to have a space in nashville but have like just my my getaway my like secret lovely beautiful space secret hobbit hole a little bit like outside of the city somewhere just really relax and unwind and like that's home base you know? yeah i i have one similar to I don't really anticipate leaving Nashville long term, but I would like to leave Nashville short term, I think, but finish up school and maybe like live in Chicago for a little bit, we've been talking about, because our boy. <laughs> uh, yeah, we've been talking about like how cool it would be live, to, to live in a place like Chicago or maybe Austin. We really liked Austin, we went to South by and uh, just spend a little bit of time there, work on a project or something like that, or maybe just travel. I might hop in a van and go, or I don't know, maybe hike the Appalachian Trail. But then uh, eventually I'll come back to Nashville, I think, and at least, I can't really speak for the future. I don't really like to think super far ahead of myself, just in case, but, you know, we'll see. Well, put it this way, right? Just because Nashville is your present crib doesn't mean it can't be your future crib. <laughs> hashtag present crib, hashtag sleepy Johnny. Uh, <laughs> so thank you guys for uh, coming and talking to me. Uh, this is Future Crib from Nashville. Why don't you guys uh, say where 
people, listeners, can find you uh, and listen to your music or just look at pictures of you and uh, swoon? The internet. We need to drop a single called You're Moving. It's on Spotify uh, or any other streaming platform. And uh, go check it out. That'll well, be out in a, that's be like a 10 song record out in August. So be on the look. Be on the lookout for that because they're great and you'll want to go listen to more. So thank you, Michael. There you go. Thank you. I'm Michael Alleyron. I'm 5'10, and this has been MoTV. Hi, we're Future Crib, and you're watching MoTV. Perfect. <laughs>